So today's topic, I'm going to talk about how to leverage the power of investors in your business. And this topic is, you know, very interesting and it intrigues most people. And it's not just intriguing, it's actually is most effective technique that you can deploy in your business right away when you're starting it for the first time or even if you are in business for past five ten years you can uh, leverage the power of investors anytime you want in order to speed up the progress in growing your uh, in building and growing your business uh, quicker so you see uh, investors are very interesting people they have a lot more capability to take risks and you know uh, they have an appetite they have a, a bigger appetite than normal people so so watch so you know customers you're trying to build a business selling products and services to customers so what will happen is that the customer will need you to have a brand name right you need to have a brand name in order to convert a customer you need to show them you, you need to have a really good quality product or service right and then you need to show them proofs you need to provide them with free services or you know some some freebies as well right and then you have to provide them with guarantees you have to provide them with uh, great support right and then they don't even pay you as much they you know purchase they, they try to go to a seller who is providing the same product or service for cheaper right so you have to keep your prices competitive so you have to keep competitive prices <clears throat> However, the investor, on the other hand, he doesn't need a brand name because, you know, investor by definition is a person who invests in people who are underdog entrepreneurs who have a particular idea or a particular strategy or a particular product that can resolve a particular problem in the market. And the investor is willing to take risks and he's willing to bet his money on that idea on building that idea growing that idea further so the investor doesn't need a brand he doesn't need a product or service you don't have to build a product first in order to convince an investor in order to invest in your business right but a customer he will need you to have a product if you don't already have a product if you promise a customer that you know once he makes payments and then you know after six months you will build the product and deliver to him he will not be interested in making that purchase because six months is a long period of time right but investor he can wait six months one year two year even five years ten years to get uh, to you know uh, in order to get uh, start seeing some results on his investments so <clears throat> investor doesn't need you to build a product upfront in order to convince him you know he doesn't need proofs that this particular idea is go actually going to work investor doesn't need guarantees he always knows that you know there's a risk involved in failing you know succeeding a business failing a business there's always you know ch chances that it's a high risk investment right now investors they have their own techniques methodologies in order to lower that risk by empowering the entrepreneur with additional resources and procedures so that their risk of investment will be minimized but apart from that you know the point is that they are willing to take a lot more risk than a normal customer and then investors have you know they don't uh, need you to have you know competitive customers they need competitive prices but investors they are willing to invest you know a lot more money into your business to make sure that your business actually succeeds because if he invests very little money then that does, does not guarantee the success of an idea you know and an investor understands that any idea needs enough backup enough capital in order to make it a success we need to invest enough amount of energy 
behind an idea in order to make it a success. So investor understands that. So investor has a huge appetite in taking risks. He has a lot of money. Even if he gives you hundred thousand dollars, he can still afford, you know, fifty more entrepreneurs like you. Right? He has a lot of money. He has millions of dollars, billions of dollars, whatever. Right? So the point is that the customer does not have a high appetite in taking risks, risks, but investor has a high appetite. So this category of people, they are high risk takers, and they are. Uh, and that's the reason why they are easy to convert as well. Now, does that mean if you approach any investor, he will just pay you any amount that you ask for? No, of course he won't because he doesn't know you, he doesn't trust you. But if you deploy the right sales process on investor, he will convert a lot quicker as compared to a normal customer. So for example, your sales process is uh, producing, you know, is uh, is getting a success rate of 15% on normal customers. And then if you deploy the similar techniques on the investor, you will get much higher, like 20%, 25-30% success rate on investors. Because investors, they have ability to take a lot more risks on people. Right? So that's the difference between investors and normal customers. So so what watch what happens so let me give you again uh, a legendary story about you know santa banta and papu right so watch what happens with these people so so santa is trying to let me uh, use paintbrush so uh, santa Banta and Papu, right? So Santa, he starts his business and he is, you know, trying to sell a service and he is investing about 30% of his time on getting customers and then he's investing about 70% of the time on delivering those customers, whatever service he is offering, right? So let's say when he's investing 30% of his time on getting customers and 70% on delivering those customers, let's say he's just getting one customer a day or one customer a week or any period of time, right? Let's say he's getting one customer a day. So he sees that he's getting only one customer a day. So his revenue, you know, is dependent on only just one customer. He's making only, you know, small amount of revenue. So what he does, he increases his time on getting customers to 50%. Increase, he doubles it, you know, 30% to 50%, almost double. But when he does that, what happens is that his delivery time reduces. You know, he doesn't have as much time to deliver those customers. So he increases the uh, time investment on getting customers. And so he starts getting two customers a day but now his time investment on delivery is reduced which means what which means that his quality of delivery is suffering earlier he was investing 70 percent of time on this on one customer now he's investing 50 percent of time on two customers which means that his quality of delivery has reduced four times because he has limited time in a day right he has only 10 hours or 8 hours in one day that he can invest on working right so <clears throat> he's in, uh, investing only 25 percent of time on one uh, one customer earlier he was investing 70 percent now he's investing only 20 25 percent on one customer 50 percent on two customers so what he does he calls his brother banta to partner up with him so that they can you know distribute the workload right so that you know the quality of delivery will increase as well as the number of clients they generate will increase as well so they both partner up together so now what happens is that santa is investing 100% of his time on generating customers 
and then Banta is investing 100% of his time on delivering those customers. Right, so what happens is that now Santa is able to produce about three to four clients a day and Banta is delivering to those clients, three clients. But still, it's not as good as 70%. You know, one person, one, uh, one client is getting only 33% of the time. Right, <clears throat> still not as effective. So the customers are not as satisfied as they were in this scenario when the when one person was investing 30 percent of time uh now there are three people a day and each person gets only seven uh, 33 percent of the time right so the delivery is still not as good and the model is not as scalable now watch uh, what Papu does so this guy Papu, legendary guy so what he does he applies a different strategy <clears throat> He notices, you know, what happens here. You know, it's not possible to, you know, find customers and then deliver those customers by yourself. Or even if, you know, you have one or two people, it's still not enough. And even those those customers are paying you only like, you know, $500, $1,000, which is a small amount of money, right? So it's not possible to hire people in the delivery side in order to scale up the delivery process, right? or in order to you know deliver uh, good quality results so what he does instead of you know trying to sell to customers for $500 or $1000 he approaches investors so he focuses on investor on converting investors so investors are his customers basically so he goes out there he converts one investor who pays him $100,000 right so or let's say twenty thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars it could be any amount but let's say hundred thousand dollars to make the numbers easier to understand right so papu goes out there instead of trying to convert customers he converts investors so one investor gives him hundred thousand dollars so what papu does is that with hundred thousand dollars he hires ten people so ten people he deploys on building a product so 100% of the time of those 10 people is going into building a high quality product, right? Product. <clears throat> right, so he hires, you know, he has enough money. So he invested, you know, he invested all of his time in not convert, converting customers, but converting investors. And converting investors was lot was lot easier because you know investor con, uh, investors they have low action threshold they are easy to convert they they have a high appetite of taking risks customers on the other hand they take a lot more amount of time to con uh, to convert they want to do like you know thousand different things in doing research they they want to talk about it they want to think about it they want to do all sorts of things before they even spend one dollar on you. Right, but investors, they don't need to inv uh, they don't need to think too much, and it uh, and you know customers might have affordability problems, like they might not be able to afford the five hundred dollars amount, but investors don't have the affordability problem either, right? So investors they have low action threshold, they are they have high risk uh, appetite, they have a lot of money to afford. And so it's very easy and quick to convert these investors if you deploy the right sales process. Now you might have heard case studies, you know, where, where people are trying to find investor and they even after five, 10 years, they're, they're not able to find an investor. But that's because they don't understand sales. They don't understand how to optimize the sales process. They don't understand the principles of sales or they feel like, you know, they're not able to find the right type of investors because they are not able to convert them so that's what happens if you don't optimize your sales process but once you optimize your sales process you know convert uh, investors are extremely quick to convert they convert very very quickly <clears throat> and so what happens is that you know papu goes out there in, uh, instead of investing time on in converting uh, customers he invests all of his time in converting investors 
and he gets investors easily because investors are easy to convert. Santa was investing a lot of time and he was just getting, you know, one, cust uh, one customer a day. Papu was getting a lot more, was able to convert a lot more investors in the same amount of time because investors are easy to convert, right? So he gets money from one investor. He invests in building a product team, a team to build the product, continuously building, optimizing, testing, improving the product, a full-time team, dedicated specific specialized team high quality team with high quality skills right and he pays them really good amount of money so that they would be interested and focused and passionate and dedicated to build that one product that the customers these type of customers need right and automating the entire process of delivery and then what he does, he doesn't start the sales process yet. He goes out there again to find another investor, second investor. And that investor gives him again uh, $100,000. So he uses that money to build a sales team. He hires, you know, three, five people in sales team. And he deploys them on automating the sales processes and building the sales processes of the company right <clears throat> so all of those five people 100 percent of their time is being invested in the sales processes optimizing and automating the sales process and 100 percent of the time of these comp uh, these people development side is going into building the product so again it's not a good art but i think you get the picture right so that's how Papu scales his business that's uh, that's the strategy that papu deploys and this is the strategy that santa and banta deploys so who do you think is going to grow his business a lot quicker santa and banta who are dealing with customers who don't have money to pay or not able to afford and who have a high action threshold they're not easy to convert or papu who is dealing with people who have money who are rich who are high risk takers who understand the value of building technology, people who understand, you know, who value long-term visions. Is Papu going to scale up quicker or is Santa Banta is going to scale up quicker? The answer is very simple. Papu is going to scale a lot quicker because he's dealing with the right type of people and his strategy is a lot more optimized. Right now, the question is how to find these investors, how to find people who have money to pay. Right. So it's a very simple question. And, I'm, you know, I'm going to keep this session short. It's uh, again about 18 minutes. Yesterday's session was too long. So I want to make sure I keep this session short. But just to give you some golden nuggets, you know, rich people are how to find rich people. So rich people, how to find investors right so you know it's not a rocket science to how to find people it's very easy if you if you dedicate some time every day instead of you know um, trying to sell uh, a small service to normal people if you try to go out there and actually try to find rich people you will find rich people everywhere even in your city your own city there are you know rich business owners rich restaurant owners which uh, uh, you know uh, people who are running businesses they are all rich and they are all investors every person who is rich most likely he's investing he is a high risk taker because he needs to use that money in order to reinvest into other ideas because he cannot use all of his money into his own business to scale up all the procedures right he he has a lot of money but he doesn't have procedures to make a use a good use of that money so he is you know taking risks and investing money on different types of opportunities so every person who is rich is basically can be converted into an investor and a person who is an investor can be converted easily into your customer your investor basically person who invests in your business right so 
you know one one strategy to find investors can be you know um let's say you know uh, there are many college professors right uh, you know there are many colleges and you build a relationship with professors and these professors have connections with people who are investors and these investors they are looking for talent young talent college students you know to invest into you know startup startup ideas new startup ideas so you build a relationship with professors or you build relationship with journalists you build relationship with government officials all of these people have the right connections how to find these people right now the question is how to find these people how to find professors it's very easy you go out on the college's website you know their phone number is provided their email information is provided and most of these professors they are low key pro they they are low key people investors or pe who are rich people they might be busy people but people who are you know like college professors uh they are not they, they are also busy i mean you know every successful person is busy in his life but the point is that you know um these type of people they are quick to reply so if you are trying to build a relationship with a college professor he will be very easy to you know you you'll be able to penetrate his um trust level very easily because they are low key and they are easy to you know build a relationship with and once you build relationship with these people then you have easy access to all the right types of people especially investors that's just one strategy there are thousands of different strategies if you put it in your work you put it in your mind you'll be able to easily find investors and then you'll be able to easily convert those investors as well if you optimize your sales process so with that our session ends and i will let you guys ask me any questions before i leave <clears throat> So, any questions? Uh, probably in this session, one question. Yeah. See, uh, finding out the customer first and uh, and converting him into yes. investor. So I had a question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pratham, just a second. Uh, Suresh is asking me a question. Um. Yes, yeah, Suresh. Yeah, yeah, as as you said, uh, Papu is starting with uh, finding uh, customer, right? Okay. As an investor. Okay. Yeah, but but uh, uh, directly he cannot uh, search for a customer, uh, and uh, directly he has to search for a investor. What well, what comes first? Whether we we have to analyze the business and we have to search for the investors or the customers. as per papu strategy papu did not search for customers he was searching yeah. for investors and First, he yeah. used the investors money in order to build the product and then he also used the investors money to build a sales team and that sales team is going to build a customer base later on good yeah good good that sounds good okay